I know it really does sound like the most counterintuitive thing to do, but it's probably the thing that's going to help you to get better results, especially if you feel stressed out or you're overwhelmed or you've just got a lot of stuff on. This is going to help massively. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Just sitting here, chilling, having my coffee, and I thought that this is a really great time to talk about time management, even though I'm just chilling at the moment, having uh, my long black with a spoonful of honey in there, my favorite caffeinated beverage. But anyway, let's talk about time management, and let's talk about the one little tip that is something that I think will help most people, but it's almost counterintuitive. It's the thing that most people don't want to do. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Michael Mojo, the founder of Mojo Human Performance Institute, where we focus on mindset, business, and lifestyle hacking for driven mofos. I know that most people are gonna waste their life, they're just gonna throw it away, they're gonna run amok, do crazy shit, lose all their money, waste all their time, waste most of their energy, and they're gonna to get to the end of life and go, what happened to my life? In fact, I saw my grandfather who uh, passed away about five to six years ago now, and he was the strongest person in my life. And a couple of weeks before he passed away, uh, he was diagnosed with cancer and only had uh, a couple of weeks to live. Uh, I watched him cry every day. And one of his key comments was, you know, I spent most of my life doing things that I didn't really want to do and wasted a lot of my life. And, you know, that that was some things that I, I really remember about his final couple of weeks. And so it promoted this massive fire under my ass to not want to be average, not want to be mediocre and not want to just do what most people do, which is waste their life. And that's the reason why I do these podcasts. It's the reason why I push our community so hard. And it's also the reason why we tend to attract a lot of driven people who really have big goals, big dreams, huge ambitions, or even people who just want to live a better quality of life and know that they're not giving themselves that better quality of life. Because it's hard work. It is tough. Life's going to be tough either way. You know, life's going to be tough when you do nothing and life's going to be tough when you work hard and push hard and achieve great things. Just like life's going to be stressful when you're not doing much, but life's also going to be stressful when you're doing a lot. So I just prefer to do a lot and be stressed. I won't say that I'm highly stressed if you go back and listen to some of the other episodes, I talk quite a lot about distress and you stress. You stress is beneficial stress where you feel like you're achieving a lot and you're pushing hard, but growth happens when you have you stress. And so maximum growth, the more that you can push yourself, the more you'll have you stress, which is where you're going to have optimum growth, not distress, which is where a lot of people are at, where they have a lot of confusion, a lot of burnout, they feel massively overwhelmed. And that's normally because someone has a lack of the three pillars that I talk about at our Thrive Time event. So the first one is knowing what really fulfills them. There's a whole bunch of principles or a whole bunch of keys that go in that pillar. Then you also have knowing what you're driving towards and having a lot of clarity in regards to that. And so most people in life really lack a lot of clarity in regards to their mission, their purpose, their values, their vision, what they're really trying to achieve in life. And so because of that, most people just waste so much time, so much energy because they're trying to figure everything out. And then finally, you've got performance psychology. If you don't know how to tap into the most valuable asset that you have, which is the thing that sits in between your ears, then you're probably bound to waste a lot of your life or fuck up a lot of shit along the way just because you don't know how to tap into that asset. If I had a choice of getting a million dollars or getting a million dollars worth of knowledge, I would take a million dollars worth of knowledge every day of the week. And that's what happened when I originally started the business was that I'd spent pretty much a million dollars. It was close to a million dollars before we made our first million. But then after that, we've, we haven't had really a year where we've dropped outside of that million dollars since, just because that knowledge people can't take away from you. Uh, we've had a couple of really tough years in that area, but it's always just been consistent growth. So what I've found is that the knowledge always proceeds or comes before the growth, especially in business and life. So it, it tends to be that there's a lot of things that you don't know. And then when you learn those things, then you progress and you step forward. So it's almost like that you've got to get the knowledge first before you get the results. Now, for most people in life, you can sort of get to a certain point. You can get to the average line or maybe a little bit above average without a lot of knowledge, just a lot of hard work. And so that's where a lot of people get to, especially if they're hard workers or driven mofos. But after that, you'll notice that there's a big glass ceiling that most people keep butting up against. They can't really get anywhere or, or, or don't really know how to achieve beyond that. That's how most people operate. Anyway, let's get into today's episode because I think this one is really important and it's the most counterintuitive thing that most people do when it comes to time management, but it's also the thing that really helps if 
you know what you're doing. And what that is, is that when someone has a diary or a calendar, they'll look at their calendar and they go, wow, look how much stuff I've got in here. And I watch most people in our society that are driven and want to achieve more. What will happen is that they will say things like, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, you know, I've got so much on, I'm so busy. And because of that, their brain then starts to create a counterbalancer. Now, if you've done any of my events, I talk a lot about the latest science and the latest research and not stuff that's been outdated for 30 or 40 years, but some of the latest stuff. And there's something been around for about the last maybe five to eight years or something like that uh, called memories and anti-memories. What it essentially shows is that our brain has these two parts. There's an unconscious and a conscious side, which, you know, has been spoken about for the last hundred years or so from Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud and, and people like that. But what it's showing now is that our brain has this counterbalancing mechanism in order to keep itself stable. And so if we are consistently worried about being busy, being busy, being busy, being busy, it starts to create this counterbalance of escape. So when we get super busy and when we're trying to achieve a lot, our brain then starts to go, you know what I need? I really need a holiday. You know, I'm so busy. I need a holiday or I need some time off. And so they're those voices that pop up inside a person's head that want them to rest, that want them to relax, that want them to do less. Not do more, but to do less. And so when someone's starting to get busy and overwhelmed, they start craving doing less. And so the craving of less becomes an impulse where they just go, you know, I just need a holiday. I just need to get away. I just need to escape. But it's probably the wrong way of looking at it. What you need to do is jam more into your calendar that is important and prioritized. Because what will happen is when you actually have really high priorities and your calendar is full, what it does is it spits out the lowest value items. So you just can't put in low value shit. And the reason why I'm talking about this is only recently I got to a point where I was flat out and the team were coming to me saying, you know, we need all this other stuff as well. And then I had to get some stuff done for our business odyssey or our business growth odyssey, uh, which is a year long program that we run where we catch up with uh, business owners every 90 days. Um, and we really go through a lot of growth principles that most businesses aren't doing, especially if they're below the $10 million price point. So we do get a lot of business owners in between, you know, three $300,000 turnover. The majority of them are up to about three to 4 million turnover a year, and they're all wanting to progress to about 10 million. So we get a lot of these business owners that come along. I just had a lot of work on. I've got a lot of private clients. Oh, I shouldn't say a lot because I only take on a couple a year, but I just, I was getting a lot of work from them as well. I've got other businesses that I'm working on at the moment as well. So I just had a lot of stuff on. So what I had to do was to sit down and go, right, what's the most important stuff that I have to get done that is a non-negotiable that is helping me to achieve my mission. Not like what's the most urgent shit that keeps popping up, like paying bills and all that sort of stuff, which I don't normally do anyway. But I find that most people do low value and low priority tasks first because they want to get shit off of their to-do list. The problem with that is, is if you're always doing low value, low priority tasks, then it makes you low value, low priority. So if you want to be a high value person and a high priority person, then you have to prioritize your calendar and your day and your week with high value, high priority tasks. So I went back, I had a look at it and said like, what What's the one thing that I have to get done that is high value, high priority, and is something that I really enjoy doing? And so a lot of that was my teaching and my coaching and, and research and so on. So then I went back, I stacked my calendar out with those things. Then I packed the uh, another high priority, high value thing around that, which was my one-on-one -on -one clients and some of the new business ventures that I have with them that I'm working with. So then I packed out my calendar in there. Then I had a couple of speaking engagements. Um, so I, I put that in. Then also I know that my health is important to me and exercise and training. If not, I end up a grumpy bastard every day. So I put that in there. I put time with Jess in there. So then I start building out my whole calendar. And then there was probably about 10 to 15 tasks that I knew I wouldn't get time to do. So what I had to do then was go, I still want to get these done, but do I hire another staff member or do I delegate them out? And at our most recent business odyssey, we spoke about that uh, with somebody called Mark Lim, who's probably one of the world's best business strategists um, and has worked with some pretty large organizations about how you start delegating responsibilities to other staff members. Because it's so important, I think too many business owners that want to grow their business backlog themselves and they end up so busy that they don't even have time to think, they don't have time to prioritize and they don't have time to lead their team. And that is going to be a huge huge bottleneck in the business. Because if you don't even have time, your staff will have a lot of time. They'll run around like crazy trying to get a lot of shit done. But at the same time, they won't be super effective because no one's guiding them. You know, it's like letting a bunch of wild horses out the gate and you just let them run in a direction. If there's no leader, they'll just run wherever they want. And so that happens a lot in businesses just because most business owners say, I'm so busy, I've got so much shit on, I'm always doing this stuff. So you have to make sure if you're a business owner or even if you're a leader or a manager, you have to make sure that you're on top of your time 
time management. And you've got to make sure that you're prioritizing things in the right way, in the right order, because if not, it's so easy for the people around you to just get off track. So anyway, I prioritize all my time. I write down other things that need to be done in the business and need to be done with our events and our seminars and all that sort of stuff. And then I go to my team and I start delegating those responsibilities. And so I start to put together some processes for them and, and help them out with that. And there's some simple ways of just creating processes, which essentially are best practices. When you think about processes, I, I want you to think about what are the best practices and you document how you do things in the best way instead of I need to create a process and for most business owners it just becomes stressful and confusing because a process is normally a system or a structure that needs to be really well written out and documented and all this and it normally creates confusion because the person isn't documenting what they do they're documenting what they think should be done and so they're two completely different things so I go on I start creating these best practices and I delegate them and now all of a sudden I'm doing more high priority more high value things in the business, which are leading to more sales, which have been leading to better events, better customer reviews, better customer service. And now all of a sudden, our business is going through a growth cycle right now. And it's only started the last couple of weeks since I had to reprioritize my calendar because I had too much shit to do. And this is where most business owners fall and they or they fail or they bottleneck their business or they create glass ceilings just because they keep doing what they've always done. They keep over prioritizing low value, low priority tasks which then don't lead to business growth or they chase the business growth stuff until all this other shit piles up because they never really delegated it properly and then everything just bottlenecks with them again. And so you've, you really have to make sure that you do it correctly, you prioritize correctly. And there's been lots of other podcasts that I've gone through and spoken about prioritization. So you may want to go back and listen to them if you haven't. I just think that it's something that's super important that most people don't do. But essentially what you want to do is you want to pile your time up with more, not less. So that then what it does is it spits out the lower priority tasks. You know, it's almost like when you create something of high pressure, like let's say you get a shopping bag or a plastic bag and you poke a couple of holes in it. If you squeeze it hard enough, eventually shit will just start squirting out the holes. That's your high priority tasks. So if you put enough pressure in your life, eventually it squirts out the highest value, highest priority tasks and the low value, low priority tasks get stuck and then they can get delegated. What most people do though, is that they just don't put enough pressure on themselves in order to prioritize effectively. So what I find is that there are so many people who just are stuck in that average or mediocre line and they'll come to me and they say, Michael, you know, I want to get better results. I want to be able to achieve more. Now, this happens quite a lot when we get people who are coming to Thrive Time and, and haven't done that event yet. So what normally happens is they say, Michael, I want to achieve more. I want to get more done, but I'm already busy. I've got so much to do. I've got so much on. And that normally becomes one of their objections when I'm doing the sale for Thrive Time or when one of our team is selling to them our Thrive Time event. And they say, Michael, I'd love to come, but I just can't take four days off. Now, if you're a business owner and you can't take four days off, you're already fucked. Like your business is already bottlenecked massively. And so you then need to do that course in order to learn how to prioritize things effectively and also how to make sure you stay on top of your mindset, which is essentially your mental health, your stress levels, you're overwhelmed because you need to have stress, but you need to have you stress where you still control it, which is good stress. You need to have pressure but you need to have pressure that you control, not it controls you. Because once you start getting massively overwhelmed and you're losing sleep and you're starting to use things like alcohol or drugs or you're overeating or you just get stuck in your head all the time and you can't connect with people when you get home from work just because you've got this crazy mindset, all of those things are huge red flags that you're not prioritizing and managing your time effectively. What you need to do is you need to jam more into your time at more high priority tasks so that then what it does is it spits out the low priority tasks and gets rid of them. And so that's where the pressure is created. You need to create more pressure so that it pushes the non-essential shit out of your life. But most people don't do that. Like when I see someone who says, you know, Michael, I just don't have time to do stuff. I don't have time to grow my business. I don't have time to, whether it's come to one of our events or somebody else's events and they're stressed and they're overwhelmed. Yet I look at their Facebook page, which I do. I go and have a look, like normally before I'm talking to someone, I'll go and have a look at their social media pages just to sort of see, you know, what they normally get up to. Because what it does is it allows me to coach them through problems that I can easily see just based on their social media. I go and have a look and I see that on weekends, you know, on Friday night, they're out drinking. Saturday night, they're out motorbike riding and then they're around a campfire with a whole bunch of their buddies having, you know, a whole bunch of beers. And then Sunday, they're waking up and that, you know, the headline is, geez, that was a big weekend, hung over, feel like shit, all of this sort of stuff. Now they're telling me they don't have time to grow their business. What's more of a priority? Drinking on Friday night and getting smashed, hanging out with your buddies or getting your business to grow. Now, there are times where you will need to have time with friends and all that sort of stuff. But if you're hungover, you've essentially just wasted three days.
days. You know, most people don't think, well, you know, I, I've wasted an extra three days on top of my weekend. But if you've had a big weekend, you're non-effective until Wednesday or Thursday. And there are people out there who'll dispute that and they go, oh, I'm not like that because my dad does it. My dad's like, oh no, I recover quick. But when you have a look at his productivity and his ability to think effectively, he's not any better by Wednesday or Thursday. Like he's still just cruising. To get rid of the toxins and to get your sleeping patterns back up, you know, back up to normal, all of that stuff. It does take a good couple of days after having a big drinking session to return everything to normal, at least. You know, when I look at that, I ask the question, what's really a priority? Is getting smashed on the weekend or is watching football on the weekend more important than growing your business? Because if it is, it tells you your priorities. When your business becomes a higher priority than sport and when it becomes a higher priority than friends, then that's normally where you start to get really good business growth and really good traction because you start prioritizing the things that are important. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out with friends and things like that, but if your whole weekend is stacked in social, you know, social stuff and you're saying at the same time, I'm stressed all the time in my business or I'm stressed all the time in my life, then you've got two and a half days that you could, which is, you know, Friday afternoon, you essentially have two and a half days where you could be doing stuff to improve the quality of your life. And for most people, they just don't do that because they want to try to escape from the life that they've created. And so for them, giving up a weekend is fucking ridiculous. I had someone I was only talking to last week who's a business owner who said to me, Michael, you know, I'm so glad that I've just joined the business growth odyssey that you've got because it puts me in an environment of people who think differently and who are driven to grow and business owners who are driven to grow their business versus he said a lot of my mates that are business owners and non-business owners think that this shit is crazy. Like, why would you spend the money? Why would you give up your weekends to do this sort of stuff? And he said, they just don't understand Michael, which... You know, I know that's the reason why I left my friendship circle when I was in my early 20s, because I realized that my friends, the people that I cared most about, were going to be stuck doing the same thing that they had always been doing, which, you know, even when we were 17, we used to go out and drink all the time. Well, sorry, I wasn't going out drinking all the time. Um, they were. I didn't really start drinking until I was really around about 2021. 20, and then I started drinking fairly heavily, but probably by the age of about maybe late 21, maybe early 22s, they were just at the pub every night after work. They would gamble on the dogs and all that sort of stuff. And I just knew that I wasn't going to be the person that I wanted to be in life. So I decided to walk away from that friendship group and I copped a lot of shit and I copped a lot of criticism, but also some of those friends have now come to my events. And some of those friends have improved the quality of their life just because of me leading first and me doing things. It took them like 15 years of criticizing the shit out of me and Oh, I don't think they criticized me for 15 years. They probably did for a couple of years. And then, you know, we just lost contact. And then, um, you know, they've slowly come back into my life over the last couple of years. But in your own life, you have to make that decision. What is really important? And if you keep doing what you're doing right now, is it working? Most people just don't ask that question. You know, sometimes I get on the phone with people and they're like, you know, my life's shit. Everything's falling apart. I'm not getting the results that I want. Or some people say, you know, I'm not where I want to be in my business. I'm bottlenecking. My turnover hasn't really changed for the last three or four years. You know, I'm just stuck. I'm stressed all the time. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to grow my administration. I don't know how to grow, you know, my internal team to make sure that the business can keep growing. I don't know how to have a manager. They have all of these patterns. And then I say to them, this is what you need to do. You need to invest in your business. You need to invest in yourself and you need to grow and you need to learn and you need to be around the right environment. And then you just listen to them, just slam all these objections your way. You know, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. You know, what's my wife going to think? Or what's my husband going to think? And I sit there and I go, hang on, you've just spent all this time complaining that you're not where you want to be. But at the same time, you've got an opportunity opportunity to make a change, yet you won't make a change. And so for most people, the hardest thing that they have to do is just to change their decision-making strategy. And that is to make a different decision. And so, you know, coming back to the start of this talk where I was talking about time management, when most people are already busy and they're flat out to take on more work normally stresses them out more. And so naturally they'll have a tendency to want to do less. They'll want to go on a holiday. They'll want to get away from everything instead of realizing that this is their, their opportunity to prioritize more high value, high priority tasks for business growth or for lifestyle growth. And what it will do is it will actually enhance the quality of their life, but it's a different decision that they need to make. Most people spend the majority of their life trying to escape their problems, not dealing with their problems. This just becomes a, a a common pattern that most people have. But anyway, give it a try. Just see what happens. Go out and try to figure out what are some things that you've been putting off in your business or in your life that are higher value that you keep putting off and a more higher priority that if you make this decision, will lead to a better future if you take on those opportunities or make those decisions. Then from there, come back and know that you don't have space in your calendar or if you're, you know, if you're a busy person, you'll say, you know, I don't have time to do this shit. Then go back to your calendar and go, okay, if I put these high priority, high value things in my calendar or in my time management software or whatever I'm using, and then how, what else is a high value, high priority that I can stack around these other new priorities? Then you start to fill out your calendar with high value, high priority. And what it will do is it will spit out the shit that isn't really important. And 
do you know one of the most common things that I speak to or, or that I hear when I speak to business owners is they say things like, you know, Michael, I'm still doing a lot of admin. If you're doing admin and you've got a business that's turning over more than a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year, then you're essentially the bottleneck in the business and you're hitting a glass ceiling. If you're still doing the majority of your finances and your tax returns and all that sort of stuff, and you're earning over more than a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year, you're going to be a bottleneck. So this is opportunities where you need to go out and start to hire the right people. We do spend a lot of time and a lot of energy going through this in uh, in our business growth odyssey for that specific reason, because you need to hire the right people around you to do the right job. And if you keep holding on to everything because you're afraid to let go of it, then you're just always going to be a one person show in your business and it's never going to grow. And that's okay. Some people just love doing their art. So essentially they're an artist that just loves to do their art. That's the electrician that just wants to work by themselves and do electrical. It's the plumber that just wants to do plumbing. You know, it's a mechanic that just wants to do mechanic stuff. That's essentially an artist if you read the book, The E-Myth. So if you really do want to grow a business and you want to be a legitimate business owner, then you need to have people around you and you need to have management and you've got to have leadership and you've got to have all of those things. And they're skill sets that need to be learned. It depends really what you want, but give it a shot. See what happens when you jam your calendar with more stuff that are high value, high priority. Watch what happens. Your finances will probably grow. Your lifestyle will probably grow. And you'll get to a point where you start to realize if you need time off, you just take time off. But it's normally because you've earned the time off, not just because you're busy and overwhelmed and stressed out and frustrated like most people. Anyway, Driven Mofos, if you haven't already done so, please make sure you rate and review this podcast. The more people that rate and review the podcast, the more it gets out to more people. Our numbers are increasing. So please, if you can and you haven't already done so, please rate and review the podcast. You just need to click on the little stars at the top of whatever you are, uh, whatever platform or whatever podcasting app that you're using. You can just give it a star rating there. It'll take all of about three seconds. Also this week, I've got a huge challenge for you if you're up for it. Are you up for the challenge, Driven Mofos? If you are, we are looking to grow our numbers. I want to keep pushing this up the charts and I really need your help. And the way that you can do that is just let one new person in the next seven days. So then in the next week, if you can let one new person know about this podcast, you can just copy the link and send it to them and just say, hey, listen to this. I think it will help. Please send it to any Driven Mofos out there. So anyone who wants to be more driven in life or more driven in business, please send it to them um, and get them to listen to it. I would love to keep keep increasing these numbers. That is our growth challenge for the next couple of months. So please, if you haven't already done so, if you can just copy the link and send it to one friend and let them know to listen to it, or at least tell one new person in the next seven days about this podcast, it will help massively. Anyway, Driven Mofos, thanks for being part of this epic community. I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. 